What's up y'all? It's your girl. So like three videos in, I already don't know what to make a video on. And it's not that I don't have things I can't talk about, but looking back on my life experiences, a lot of it is illegal, inappropriate, or a god-awful mix of both. So let's just get sad. Like I've said before, I've had 2.5 exes, and let me tell you, only one of them was actually nice. The next 1.5 were straight up just. The second one, we just kind of used each other, and let's just say it did not end well. Like a really bad ending. There may have been hands thrown kind of deal. And my last X, the 0.5X. Who f boy? Okay, so I only say we had half of a relationship because of the fact that we were exclusive but not official. Meaning we weren't chasing after other people because we planned to be in a relationship. It turned out that way because he wanted to really get into one just soon after hanging out, and I'm a personal believer in the whole, you can't get into a relationship just because you share feelings. That stops you from getting into them with mere strangers, or actually knowing that you're both compatible with each other. Like fam, you actually have to know a person before you can date them, not the other way around. So for a time, I firmly believed that he was doing most of the work. He traveled down to where I was, he called, texted, FaceTime, snapped, Skype, basically everything in between. I felt like I could trust him. We should give him a name, so let's go with Terrence. Terrence and I were hanging out, and he gets a call. I leave because he told me it was a personal matter, so I left the room, and waited, and waited. Finally, he comes down sniffling, and I did my best to comfort him because he obviously was affected, right? He told me that he had to go home immediately, so I went with him to the bus stop, and that was that. Three days later, he blocks me. Listen, when this happened, I genuinely thought of every excuse and believed it despite feeling really shitty inside. When he replied to me in another platform, he told me that he was going through something really personal and would be quiet for the next week, so I respected that. I gave him space. Every once in a while, I'd reach out to him, but I'd also still get left on red. Okay, he needed space, right? More space. So I had a spam account and I uploaded posts of us together. Then I saw they'd been untagged by him. I was so confused, like, didn't he say he wanted to let the world know we were together? Like, I really hated feeling like this. I felt desperate and obsessed, but he also asked for space, so I was made to feel like I couldn't openly communicate with him anymore. Another night happens. So Instagram allows you to look at other people's activity, right? I couldn't sleep, so I went through it. And you know what I found? Terrence just liking and commenting the most thirsty shit all over these posts. Like, I was lost. All the things he said just didn't mean shit after that, and I was so mad at myself for believing them. He deactivated his account on my birthday, and in the future, I learned that he did it because he knew that it would ruin my day. And how did I deal? I stayed up doing work, just readings. I told myself specifically that I wouldn't go to bed until that's what's making me cry instead. I would have left the story there, except that's not where it ends. Sometime later, I'm casually chatting to someone. Let's call him Isaac. By this time, Terrence has reactivated his account and he was doing the whole thirsty on main thing again. I was honestly mad that I was still a bit affected, so I sent a screenshot and sent it to Isaac. That's when Isaac goes, Terrence, that man is trash, you know. Wait, how? He does this thing where he hits on girls and leads them on, promises them to be in a relationship. He does that to all my younger friends, too. I just don't remember much of that night because I was feeling too many feelings and then I just woke up really cold. I used all the things that Isaac told me to connect the dots, which meant that when Terrence met me, he was already with someone else, multiple someone else's, throughout it, which meant that the whole thing meant nothing. And school was my savior again, since I learned the truth about his cheating near final season. The worst part wasn't even the whole serial cheating part. He would hit on girls as young as 15. Like now he's like 20, 21. Great, he goes after minors after children. I guess part of the reason why I couldn't move on as quickly as I'm used to was because I had no closure. That gave me so much more room to make excuses and blame myself for someone else's actions. I just wish I could have seen the red flags back then. But when you look at things with rose-tinted glasses, all the red flags look normal to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this channel, hit the subscribe button down below. If you want to suggest a life experience for me to talk about, leave it down below in the comments. See y'all on the next video. Peace!